If you're an overseas registered nurse planning to start your nursing career in Australia, US or Canada and in the coming months you're going to write the NCLEX examination, this video is for you. Hi everyone, this is Jessin from Edilogix where we teach you logic behind things. In our today's video, I'm going to give you detailed information about the next generation NCLEX examination which is being launched across the world in April 2023. So all of you must be aware that NCLEX examination is a licensure examination in many of these countries and it is regulated by a body called NCSBN, National Council for State Boards of Nursing. Now NCSBN regularly updates this examination every few years to maintain the sanctity of the examination as well as to make sure that the examination is current in practice. So majorly, there are going to be three changes in the new examination that's going to start from April 2023. The first major change is basically addition of case studies in the exam. In the current exam, there is no case study questions that the students take. But in the new examination, there will be three case studies. And based upon each of the case study, there will be six individual questions. This means that if you're taking the examination after April 2023, you will have to do at least 18 case study questions. So these questions will very much be like what you will see in your real life nursing practice will have scenarios which will have very much the kind of experiences or situations that you may have in your real life practice. And using this information, there will be multiple questions that you have to answer. A good thing in the case study questions is that you don't have to completely remember all the lab values for the examination because the NCSBN is going to give you the normal value ranges for each of the lab values just like you see in the real life patient record. Hence, you will have one less thing to worry in your actual examination. The next major change in the examination is basically in the scoring methodology. So the current scoring method is either all correct or incorrect, which means that there's no partial scoring that is being given. In the new exam, there will be three types of scoring rules. The first scoring rule is called zero or one scoring rule, which basically means that for every answer that you select, you will be provided a one score. And for every incorrect item, you will be awarded a zero score. So as you can see on your screen, you'll be able to see a question wherein in the rows, each of the row is computed differently. And wherever the student has completed the answer correctly, they are allocated one score. And wherever the answer is incorrect, they are allocated zero scores after which their total score is computed correctly. So the next scoring rule is called plus minus scoring rule. From the name itself, you can understand that for every correct answer, you will get a one uh, score and for every incorrect answer, you will be deducted one score, which is kind of a negative marking. OK, now you can see an example of this on your screen, wherein the candidate has selected three correct answer choices and one incorrect answer choices and hence that score is deducted from the total score, making the candidate get two points for this answer. The last scoring rule is called rational scoring rule. Now this scoring rule applies to questions wherein the answer choices are correlated or basically they are paired information. For example, let's say cause and effect type of questions. And here the candidate need to select both the options correctly to get the uh, required uh, marks because both the information correlate with each other. The third big change in this examination is basically introduction of new item type. So the first item type that is going to be newly introduced is called extended multiple response type questions. Now, this is very similar to the current existing SATA or select all that apply question, wherein you have a stem that is the question as well as multiple options from which you have to select the all the correct answers. Now, the only change in the extended multiple response question is basically the number of answer choices will be more, making it a little more difficult for the candidate to select the right answer. So the next type of question that is being introduced is called extended drag and drop. Now drag and drop is a common type of question that you see in the current NCLEX examination format. The change in the extended drag and drop is basically again like the previous question type is that there will be more answer options for you and less answer spaces. So again, the candidate may get a little confused as they have multiple options from which they have to select the right answer. So the next type of question that's being introduced is called enhanced hotspot question 
hotspot again is a common type of question that is being currently used in the examination in this new enhanced hotspot question you can basically highlight the correct answer based upon the information that you have been provided the next question type is called close or drop down question from the name itself you can understand that it is very similar to fill in the blanks the only change is basically in the blanks you will be provided a drop down when you click on the drop down you will see the different answer choices and again here there can be more answer choices than the actual number of spaces that is being given and you have to correctly select the right answer choices from the drop down menu so these are the item types that you may see in the next examination also they are testing new item types as and when we speak and i will update you if i get more information about any other changes for this exam in terms of the number of questions for the nclex next generation examination again there's a small change here the minimum number of questions that you will get is 85 now and the maximum number of questions that you may get is 150 questions out of these questions 15 questions will be pre test items similar to the current format which means that these questions will not be marked but these are basically for testing purposes in future similar to the current examination you will be provided 5 hours to complete the examination that's the maximum time but of course remember the computer may shut down as and when they are 95% certain about your result which may be pass or fail i hope you found this video informative if you did please make sure to share it with at least one of your friend and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel the youtube analytics tell me that only 50% of those who watch my channel have subscribed to it hence i would request all of you to subscribe it and get all the notifications and be informed of all the videos that i put so thank you for your time until next time see you stay safe and stay happy